everyone, today we're going to learn all about saving and spending. Let's dig in. All right, today we're going to be learning all about advantages and disadvantages of different savings accounts. I'm going to teach you all about four different kinds of savings accounts that you can save your money in. So first we have a piggy bank, which I know is kind of a silly example, but it's just a way of saving your money just in your room, in your house. A savings account is just a regular way of saving. A regular savings account usually goes with your checking account. Then we have a CD, no, not a music CD, a certificate of deposit. And it's a way of saving money, but you promise to keep your money in there for a year. Then a money market account is a type of savings account that has a higher interest. Okay, so now let's talk about advantages. Those are good things about these different ways of savings. For piggy banks, they're visible and cute. A disadvantage would be something not so good or bad about the account. So there's no interest being gained each month when you have it in a piggy bank. For a savings account, an advantage would be a low minimum to start. You could start it with just a couple bucks, so that's awesome that you don't need a lot to start it. Um, a disadvantage would be that it gains very low interest, so you're not making a lot of money each month from interest. Uh, advantage of a CD is higher interest rate, so that's nice that it grows faster. And a disadvantage would be that you can't withdraw it for a year. Um, if you do, there's some penalties and you lose some of your money. So that's not so good. And then for a money market account, a good advantage would be that it's got the highest interest of any of the savings accounts. So it's going to be growing the most. And a disadvantage is that there's a limited number of transactions but they, that may not bother you that much, but for some people it may. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about spending some of your money. So we can't always just save all of the money that we make. So we're gonna learn a little bit about uh, spending as well and different types of spending. And also sometimes you save your money so that you can spend it on a larger purchase and be able to afford it. So let's take a look at this problem on the whiteboard. Okay, so here's the example that I have for you. So Greg earns $30 each week, and he made a weekly plan for his um, spending and saving. Like I said, we can't just save all of our money. We need to spend it on some things. So let's learn a little bit about making a good plan like this. So he has decided to that each week he is going to spend 15 of those dollars that he makes. And he's going to be saving $10 for a large purchase. So sometimes there's going to be something that costs a bit more money. And you're going to want to put money back into savings so that you can eventually buy that larger purchase. And then he's also going to be putting some money in savings for college too. So that's smart as well. So now here is my problem for you. So his larger purchase is a scooter that costs $87. And I want to know how many weeks of this plan will it take to be able to afford his large purchase? So why don't you pause the video, see if you can figure that out. How many weeks will it take to save for the scooter? All right, let's check your work. So since he's saving $10 per week, we know that one week is he's going to have $10. Two weeks, he'll have $20, right? Three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks eight weeks. Okay, now what do you think? Can I stop there? I'm at 80. Oh, but I need 87. So I am going to have to go to nine weeks. 
And even though that's a bit over 87, now I have enough to cover the scooter. So nine weeks of saving. All right, awesome, great job. Great work today, everyone. I hope this video helps you in your math class or at home. Bye.